I installed the solar powered driveway alarm. So this thing is just a motion sensor that's outside and it's supposed to reach a half a mile. We have it mounted, it's about a quarter mile and it is working. So that's, that's some good news. Uh, it's like 50 bucks on Amazon, something like that. Uh, it just makes a chime inside the bus and then the chime that it plugs into is also battery powered. So if we like work on the property, we can unplug it from the, the wall socket, uh, it's a USB cord and uh, just carry it with us with the batteries and then we'll hear somebody when somebody comes up the driveway. So it's just a, a chime alert to make us aware when somebody comes up the drive so we know somebody's on the property uh, and hopefully it'll work real well. We'll see. So today I removed my RV furnace here. This is the uh, Suburban 20, I think it's 25,000 BTUs. It might be 30. I don't know if it says on it. Oh. I don't see that information on there, but it may be there. Um, but anyways, so this plus the size of a propane tank, a, a grill, barbecue grill size propane tank. So it has to, you know, it was in this enclosure, which is a little larger because you have to have space around it. You can't go right up against it and has, you know, has ducting and stuff like that. So I'm saving a ton of square footage by getting rid of this and replacing it with the little diesel fired heater that we have which is a little bit less BTUs, but this thing was way overkill. It would make it 900 degrees in the bus. Um, I don't have to carry that propane tank. I still have propane for the bus, but that's, that's a separate propane tank for that. So I'm, I'm saving, you know, a, pro, a barbecue grill size propane tank in the bay, plus this room uh, inside of the bus. Uh, and I'll show you the size difference here in just a second. This is the diesel heater here, which just, you know, uh, maybe 12 inches long by, it's probably about the size of a six by six, honestly. Um, and then there is a fuel tank that goes with it, but you could plumb that right. We already carry diesel. Uh, and this is really skinny, um, you know, three, four fingers wide, three fingers wide. Um, and it's probably 16 inches tall, 16 inches square but you can plumb that right into your tank and not have that. But here, this doesn't take up much room at all, but way, way less, you know, I'm saving many, many cubic feet, probably four or five cubic feet by going with this instead of the other. So um, we've already used this in the winter time for the bedroom. I am gonna put another one of these up front, um, but this, this we had in the bedroom on top of the other heater as well. So I'll end up with two of these versus one of those. Uh, I think these are, I don't remember what the BTU, because they rate them in, in uh, not BTUs. But uh, anyways, it puts out a tremendous amount of heat and it uses very little diesel fuel. Uh, this one thing, I've gone an entire week on this one little tank of diesel fuel running that thing every single night. So we have this direct underground burial cable here, wire, 6-3 uh, with the ground. So we're going to run down to the pad. We're doing it just as an extension cord basically right now. So from the 50 amp breaker that's here we're just running it down we're not going to let our clients run a full 50 amp on it though all right so today i basically just have this wired up as a 300 foot extension cord coming down here to the pad um, nothing's buried it's just laying out and i have i put plugs on both ends a receptacle on this end and a plug on the other end so just a way to get power down here for now until we figure out how it's going to get buried and that kind of stuff and i won't leave it plugged in all the time and uh, i'll actually um, have good power here for the next guest I got coming here tomorrow. Well, there's the plug on the new cable and I've got the breaker turned on. It is a ground fault uh, GFCI breaker, so hopefully that'll be okay. Um, sometimes some RVs have problems with those depending on how they're wired, uh, but for right now, here it is. Run over to the pad. <laughs> so 300 feet is a long way to do 50 amp through 6.3 wire. Uh, so I'm probably gonna end up, well, the bus that comes in, I'm gonna ask him to try and keep his power consumption. You know, if you keep it around 40 amps, I think we'll be fine. Um, big, big price difference to go up to, you know, a number four wire. Um, so, I mean, this will handle it. 
but I'm gonna ask that they not do the full 50. So it's two legs of 220, the 50 amps on each one. That's 100 amps total coming in. They don't need that much power down there. Uh, most RVs are just running, you know, one air conditioner at a time or even two, as long as they're on separate legs, that's fine. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. If, if it's a problem, I'll keep an eye on the, how hot this wire gets. Um, if it gets real bad, then I'll just probably swatch, swap those breakers out to 40 amp breakers. And then that way they can't pull more than 40, but uh, 300 feet for 40 amp is not really that big of a deal with 6.3. But uh, I don't think anybody that's going to be here is going to be pulling a full 50 anyways. And that, that's where the problem comes in at. Uh, so the, the smaller amperage isn't really going to be an issue, I don't think. But we'll find out. So tomorrow, down on the pad, you're going to see a scenic cruiser. <laughs> That'll be cool. He's coming in for some maintenance. Uh, we're just kind of going over uh, all the safety systems, braking, wheel hubs, that kind of stuff, air, the air system. Uh, he's got an alternator problem we're working on. Um, we've narrowed it down over the phone to the voltage regulator, so that's the easier of the two fixes on that. We ordered a new regulator from Luke. It's going to be sent here, but uh, it'll be cool, and uh, he'll have the electric down there and everything, so it should be a really fun time, and uh, three or four days I think he's going to be here.